Hey everyone, Matt from Motion VFX, and today we are releasing M Restyle 2 for DaVinci Resolve. This pack has 50 drag and drop, highly customizable, highly stylized effects. I can't wait to show you. Let's go ahead and take a look. Once you have M Restyle 2 installed, it can be located under your effects panel. Under effects and motion VFX, you will see M Restyle 2 right here with all 50 effects in this list. There are 14 artistic effects. 13 distortion, 12 tech, and 11 vintage effects. Now, just as a reminder, if you have some color corrections on your clip, like you can see here, I have pushed up the gain intentionally just to illustrate a point. Now, these effects are all gonna get processed by those color corrections if you simply drag them straight onto the clip, because of course the edit page and the fusion page all happen before the color page. So that's why this particular effect looks kind of overexposed and too saturated. Of course, under the inspector, under the effects panel, we could sort of dial back some of the colors that make up this effect, but really this is happening because like I said, the color page is also lifting up all the colors that come with this particular effect. So what you could do is either use an adjustment clip and apply the effect to the adjustment clip, and now you can see we have much more tame colors. Or another alternative is you can also right click your clip and convert this to a compound clip. And now you can apply the effect to the compound clip to bypass those color adjustments. Now, if you need to make any adjustments to the original clip, maybe the color or the edit, you can right click the compound clip and select open in timeline. And now we're looking at the clip inside of that compound clip. And from here, I could go to the color page if I wanted to and make any sort of adjustment that I need to. Or I could also, you know, lengthen this out if I need to readjust the timing. And then to get back to the main timeline, I can just double click my timeline in this little breadcrumb trail down here. And that takes me back into my main timeline. So I'm just gonna go through here and convert each of these into a compound clip just to make this tutorial a little bit more straightforward. And I'm gonna go ahead and take off this effect. So let's start off by taking a look at some of these artistic presets. I really like this very first artistic preset. This kind of gives you this really cool halftone texture. So if we drop this on to our footage, under the effects in the inspector right here, we've got three main drop-down menus for adjusting this effect. So we can adjust the gamma to sort of reveal different parts of the image, and this has a pretty big effect on that halftone texture. We can also come down to the very bottom and adjust the halftone size. And you can also adjust this gradient here that makes up the color scheme in this effect. So I'm just clicking each of these triangles and I could twirl this color palette down and adjust these two colors. You could even flip these around if you want to get this kind of negative effect like this. And you can of course toggle off the gradient if you just want to reveal this black and white image. Now the saturation you can see is set to zero. If we want to add back the original color, we can simply increase the saturation slider a bit. And I actually kind of like to combine the gradient with a little bit of the saturation like this. Kind of gives you this really neat retro effect here. Almost kind of reminds me of a comic book or Spider-Verse. Artistic preset number nine is another really interesting one here. This one you can see creates these clones around our main subject and it actually has three different options or three different duplication modes. So the standard clone mode will just give you a single copy and you can kind of slide this around. You can scale it down and you'll see when you scale it down it kind of tiles like this. You can also scale it up. And when I move this left and right you can almost see it kind of looks like it's on a curved display in 3D space. If you don't like that you can turn off the bulge toggle right here. You can also dial in the size and the strength and also the position. The effect blur will only affect your clone, so this can be an interesting way to kind of add some depth to a shot like this. And then we also have two different ring modes right here. Now these are kind of similar. They sort of duplicate the footage several times around the center here. And each of these ring modes have a corresponding slider associated with the distance. You can adjust the size of the individual copies here, as well as the rotation. It kind of orbits around the center of the frame. So you could even keyframe that. I think this could look cool if you add a keyframe in the beginning here, go to the end and maybe spin that rotation just a bit like that. And that can give us this really stylized, almost dreamy type of effect. Next up, let's take a look at a couple of these distortion presets. Number one will kind of give you this outline around any sort of contrasty edges. And what I ended up doing in the intro for this particular effect 
I actually animated the refraction strength right here. So I started at zero and made a keyframe and kind of went almost towards the very end here and just increased this a bit like that. And I also went down to the outline controls here and kind of messed with the width and the brightness. Now, if you lower the brightness all the way, this will kind of fade out that outline. So you can also animate this on and off rather than just having this hard cut off with the outline toggle. So what I ended up doing is I kind of started in the middle and made a keyframe here and went almost towards the very end and just lowered the brightness all the way down. And I actually turned the prism off on this clip. So you can see that gives us this really cool outline effect around our subject, kind of growing into the camera almost in 3D space. Now take a look at distortion preset number three. I think this one works really well with really high contrast shots like this. It's not that it doesn't work on other shots, but you can see it sort of affects everything. But on this type of shot, I use this to kind of give us this really interesting sliced vertical effect like this. Now under the inspector, we can increase the strength. We can even mess with the pixel frequency as well as the shape. So you can see little tiny hexagons or triangles or squares. And I kind of did a similar thing with this. So I lowered the strength all the way to zero in the beginning of the clip and then moved the playhead almost towards the end there and then just increase that strength quite a bit. And that looks really cool. And this would also work really well with titles. So here's a really simple title from our M documentary pack. And I could also add this distortion preset number three onto my title. And you can see it really works well with these higher contrast graphics. And under the effects, I could also animate this strength slider a bit. So maybe towards the end here, it kind of evaporates as the text fades out. Distortion preset number six is another really cool one here. This one's really stylized. It gives you these two abstract colors across the entire frame here. So we have shape one and shape two, which you can turn off individually if you wanted to. You can also adjust their position, color, softness, height, all that kind of thing. And you could also use these kind of as a transition. So the easiest way to do that would probably be to use this adjustment clip here. So let me actually delete this effect from this clip and just add this adjustment clip into my timeline. And let's make it a bit shorter and kind of position this right over this cut just like that. Now I'm gonna add distortion number six onto my adjustment clip. So it's actually gonna affect the second half of this clip in the very beginning of this clip. And so what I might wanna do is animate each of these shapes to sort of wipe across the screen. All right, so taking a look at a couple of these tech presets, number nine, this one creates this scan line that kind of goes across the footage and it even displaces depending on the type of shot. So it really looks integrated with the real scene. And if you actually look really closely, you can see this pixelated pattern here. Under cell shape, we have square, hexagon, and triangle, as well as the pixel frequency. So you could kind of crank this down a bit and maybe we could even match the line color a bit more with that filter that's already on our effect. We can even adjust the scan loops. So it's set to one, this will just scan across the footage one time. If you set this up to two, for example, it will of course do two scans, so they will happen a bit faster. All right, so moving on to vintage presets. I really like these a lot. So number eight gives you this kind of black and white paper texture. Now under texture two, you have texture offset. This is really cool. So you can move this around and almost create a paper ripping type of effect. And in the intro, I actually used this and I also keyframed this texture offset. So maybe we just start where it's barely visible in the beginning here. And then we go close to the end and just rip it wide open like this. So this can be a really cool way to kind of reveal a shot. Or we can also use an adjustment clip and kind of use this one as a transition as well. And I'm just gonna copy this clip and then paste the attribute onto this adjustment clip and just toggle on fusion effects, hit apply. Now we have two of them, so I'm gonna go back to my clip here and just delete it from the clip itself. And now we have that same transition over an adjustment clip. And to kind of help with the fade a little bit, you could just take these little opacity handles on the adjustment clip and just sort of fade this out a bit like that. And let's also add number nine here right on top. So now we have two different effects being applied to this adjustment clip. And of course with number nine, we've got this gradient control. So I might wanna push this more towards dark bluish purple. 
So really just limitless possibilities with different combinations of these effects. So that pretty much wraps up this video. Again, you can check out Emery Style 2. It's available on our website for DaVinci Resolve as well as Final Cut Pro. I think this works really well for music videos and promo videos, whatever kind of stylized creative projects you're working on. So go check it out. I hope you have fun and thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.